Good morning, Internet. Craig Chamberlain here with CraigTheTechTeacher.com. And you're watching IT Life, where I give you and all other viewers a snapshot into the real world of IT. Yes, the daily, day-to-day, -day, daily day vlog of IT Life. And we go from the mundane things to the very interesting things. Um, this show is powered by patrons. If you're not yet a patron, make sure you become one because there's a load of benefits. Plus, patrons make sure this show grows into a higher quality, higher production, making sure you guys get the best of me type show. And if you find value in it, check out the patron in patron link in the video link below. Top patrons for this month are Jacob Williams with wildacademy.com. If you're interested in Ruby programming or meeting just an interesting guy, check out Jacob Williams at wildacademy.com. Also, Brooke Chamberlain with ashleybeigephotography.com for very interesting and amazing photography work, including weddings and such. Check her out at ashleybeigephotography.com. And finally, Precision Electric, the company I work for on a day-to-day -day basis that allows me to do this in their facility. Check them out at precision-elect.com, Industrial Automation Service Center, Motor, Electronic, and Drive Repair. So let's get on with the day. IT life. Okay, so today is a good day because I walked in and it was very interesting. I got a good question from Robert Driscoll, who is a patron, and I like to get good questions from my patrons. So if you're a patron, make sure you guys shoot me some questions. It always makes it more entertaining for me. Starts my day off good because I walk into the office and I open up my email. I've got a three-monitor setup, by the way. My email's on this one. My my main screen's in front of me, and I, I am such such a spoiled spoiled person. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big time, big time geek, um, and people always like I call it my command center. So when people walk in, all they see is like three monitors, and I'm like hiding behind them. Uh, it's typically how it goes here at the office. Uh, but uh, it should be a, it should be a really good day today because um, I got a question, a request from a guy who I do his computer build for. He's going to be doing a major upgrade on his machine. And I built him the machine about three years ago with the top-of-the-line motherboard and basic hardware. And this is what I recommend if you're building a machine is always don't cheap out on the motherboard, okay? Because you can always upgrade it down the line. So I looked into it, and I can get I got him a dual core at the time and some like two gigs or four gigs of memory and and all that. But this sucker can become a eight core because of the motherboard I bought. An eight core, 16 gigs of memory, uh, with a high-end graphics card for another 600 bucks. So basically, he spent 600 dollars three years ago for a, a really, really good machine at the time, and now it's upgradable to a really, really good machine for now. And he only has to invest another 500 dollars or so. So it's really kind of cool what you can do with uh, with the motherboard if you start at that framework. But that's not the topic of today, of course. Right? The topic of today is patrons get to ask these awesome questions, and I get to answer them on the show for you guys. And Robert E. Driscoll asked me about virus removal when you don't have an internet connection. He got a, uh, he goes, Bit Bit Bitdefender discovered the following malicious application, and he put uh, the name of the, the virus, and it's preventing access to the web. There's a yellow symbol on the internet bars on system tray. Search Google, nothing. I am connected to a web to the web, something is blocking internet access. So this is, it says the Windows 7 system. This is probably, these are the most frustrating viruses because once you lose your internet connection, you cannot do your research unless you use your phone or you use a different computer. Um, and now the first thing I do, if I sit down in front of a computer that's been infected and uh, it no longer has an internet connection, first of all, I get frustrated. <laughs> and then I say, okay, fine, whatever. I will attempt to boot it in safe mode with networking. Now, if you guys have never done this, it's very, very easy to do. Uh, when you're rebooting your machine, you press, I think it's F5 or F8. I think it's F5. I always forget. I, and what you do is um, I, I press them both simultaneously. That's why I always forget because I never actually go through the trouble of uh, remembering the keys. The keystroke. Um, but what happens is when you boot in safe mode with networking, a lot of times it bypasses. Okay, it's F8. A lot of times it bypasses the uh, the virus, whatever's running the executable that's screwing up the virus. Uh, it'll allow you to boot in safe mode with networking, 
Uh, and then when you boot with Safe Mode Networking, you can go online and download various tools such as uh, the NOD32 online scanner, I strongly recommend, uh, or Malwarebytes anti-malware. Um, and, and really what I'll do is I'll boot in safe mode with networking. If my internet comes back, I'm like, yes, awesome. So then I'll go to malwarebytes.org. I'll download Malwarebytes, the free edition, and then I will uh, download the updates for that, and I will run the full scan. And then after I've done that, I will download the ESET NOD32 online scanner. Both of these are free, by the way, and they're at my website uh, at uh, craigthetechteacher.com in the free download section. Uh, the NOD32 online scanner will run a download the database from Norton from NOD and then it'll run a full scan on your machine and eliminate anything that you might have infecting your machine. So after I run those two, a lot of times that removes the virus. Uh, and if that doesn't remove the virus, then you have to be a little more creative with how you're actually troubleshooting your problem. Now, the good thing is, is he has the name of the virus. If you have the name of the virus, you can always do a Google search uh, and see if there's a manual way to remove it. You can also do a Google search to see if there's something that uh, there's some sometimes there's some damage that's caused even after you remove the virus. Uh, and, and you have to go in and manually reverse the damage that's been done. So if you have the name, it's like a good research starting point. And I've had to do that maybe a handful of times in my career. I've, I've maybe once or twice actually had to go in and manually undo what a virus has done uh, because a lot of times it it just it's taken care of by the antivirus program it does a they do a very good job of removing all traces of the virus based upon what the virus is uh, i think one of the main reasons robert uh that you got the virus was that you are using bitdefender uh, bitdefender is an okay antivirus software package i'm glad it found it um, but bitdefender isn't exactly the the top of the line if if you are susceptible to viruses or you're not sure like if you're not tech savvy enough um, I'm not saying you aren't but if you're not uh, then I would probably move to the new Norton or I would move to NOD32 um, or I would move to Kaspersky and these are all paid for antiviruses but they're very good solutions um, but they are a lot more comprehensive and they're a lot better than Bitdefender not to mention they're more efficient because uh, that's one of the biggest problems you run into with uh, Bitdefender, I noticed, is that it's very clunky. It slows down your machine a lot. So uh, consider doing that as well, Robert. But if for some reason you don't get your internet access after the safe mode repair, which is what I emailed you, I haven't heard back from you yet. I'm hoping that's that's good news. If for some reason you still don't have uh, internet access, you probably have to go into your internet settings. And check your settings uh, because I, I've seen viruses do this and let me pull this up on my screen I'm gonna open my control panel and what you have here is you have your networking and internet section uh, and this is in the control panel into the start menu and sometimes I'll have to go into the network uh, settings and um, we'll do network and sharing center and I'll do uh, change adapter settings and then you right click on whatever your adapter is like I'll say okay mine's this local area connection and select properties and then go through here and go to your uh, internet protocol version 4 or TCP IP v4 and this will bring up your settings and some viruses will actually go in here and they will add a proxy server in your advanced settings just to throw things off not a proxy server I'm sorry but they'll add a whole bunch of junk into these um, and so really this is the default settings. So for IP settings, you should have DHCP enabled most likely uh, For DNS this really shouldn't have be populated with anything and same for winds uh, And then click OK, of course And then of course you want to go to alternate configuration and just make sure everything's set to automatically uh, obtain an IP address uh, Sometimes the proxy settings are they can they can occur if you're using Internet Explorer if you're using Internet Explorer, I do not recommend you use that. Get rid of Internet Explorer. Uh, get rid of Google Chrome. Um, no, I'm sorry. Get rid of Internet Explorer. Get Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, one of the two, because uh, Internet Explorer is very susceptible to viruses. Still is to this day, just because it's the most popular product out there. Um, so it makes it most susceptible to vulnerability. Um, now, the last thing you had mentioned is you had an exclamation mark on it. Now, if you double click on your uh, on your on your network connection here and you pull up what you uh, let me pull up those network connections again in the control panel. 
If we pull that up again, do networking and internet, and then we go to network and sharing center, a lot of times it'll tell you what the problem is here. Uh, or it'll tell you, uh, like give you a diagnostics if I click on the connection. So if I click on the connection, I can come up here and it'll tell me what the problem is. It may say no internet access, or it may say internet. See how mine says internet? Uh, it may tell you what the conflict is here right at the screen. At this point, you can still pull up properties as well. Um, and you can also, what a lot of times can work, is disabling and re-enabling uh, the network connection can sometimes help your problem as well. So those are just a couple things you can do to troubleshoot a possible internet virus. Uh, and as always, uh, online scanners are, are the best way to go um, and, and running those in safe mode with networking. Check out my website, uh, craigthetechteacher.com. Go to the free download section. I have a whole section called anti-malware and there's a whole bunch of tools. Here, let me pull it up here. You can take a look at it. Craig the Tech Teacher. Okay, and let me go to, hang on, my light's in the way. Hopefully my website will actually come up. That would be embarrassing. Come on. My website's been goofy lately. It's been running so slow for some reason, and I really haven't, I've disabled a bunch more stuff in, in the hopes that it'll fix it, but I just haven't had the time to mess with it. That's part of the patron program, by the way, is to improve the website. Okay, so here we have free downloads. And uh, what we have here is removal tools. Look at all these tools I got here. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. There's 15 tools there. So check those out, and maybe those will help you out as well. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for coming out, IT Life. Um, and uh, I'm hoping to get more Windows 8 videos turned out today as well for the Windows or the Craig Teaches series, which will become a permanent part of the series once I hit, permanent part of the show, once I hit the $500 mark on patrons. Remember, small as one cup of coffee a month, and you'll be helping make a difference on this show. See you guys in the next video, and until next time, don't be mastered by the machine, and I'm not just talking about technology.